Hello again, Year 8. This is your lesson on extracting metals from aqueous solutions. And to start us off again, there are three questions for you to have a go at. So number one, what is the difference between an element and a compound? Two, what does combustion mean? And three, what properties do group one metals have? Pause the video now to answer those and we'll go through them again at the end of the lesson. So first off, aqueous solutions. Confusing term, but essentially it just means that something is dissolved in water. OK, so if an, we have an aqueous solution of copper sulfate, for example, that means that the copper sulfate is dissolved into the water. Now, this lesson and next are going to focus around this process. This process is called electrolysis. And this image shows a very simple diagram of what happens in electrolysis and what equipment we would need. So down here, the bit that looks like the water is our aqueous solution. So part of it will be water, but we've got lead bromides dissolved within that solution. We also have two things here. So one with a plus sign on, one with a negative sign on. OK, these are our anode the positive one and the cathode so these are conductors they are very often carbon rods which are put into the aqueous solution and connected to a power supply so if you think back to your work on electricity this would represent a power supply so electrolysis the beginning part is like electricity and that's what's involved so an electric current is passed through the solution so it travels along through the wire and across through the solution back to the power supply in a complete circuit okay this causes elements to be separated and pulled apart to different sides of either the anode positive or the cathode negative okay we're going to look at an example for how this would work and how it can be used to extract and purify metals another key term that we need to know is this one ions so an ion is an element that has either gained or lost an electron it could be more than one electron, but it has either gained or lost. So if it loses an electron, an electron has a negative charge, so the ion will become positive. If it gains an electron, so if it gets an extra electron, remember electrons have negative charges, so it becomes negative. Okay. Okay, so back to looking at electrolysis, and uh, we're going to look at a specific example of electrolysis, which can be used to purify a metal so here we've got our anode remember which is positive on the right cathode is negative so the solution the aqueous solution remember dissolved in water that we're going to look at is copper sulfate solution okay so down at the bottom here where we've got our liquid this is our copper sulfate solution and here on the left we can see Cu2 plus so Cu is the symbol for copper and two plus shows that it's an ion and it is lost two electrons. OK, so it's got a positive two charge because it's lost two electrons. On the right hand side, we've got sulfate ion. So SO4. And that's got a two minus by it to show that it's gained two electrons. So fairly predictably, the negative ion two minus sulfate ion is drawn towards the positive anode and the positive copper ion is drawn towards the negative cathode okay what will happen here is the extra electrons that are in the sulfate ion will pass into the anode and will be given indirectly, it will travel through the cell down to the cathode, will be passed into the copper ion. That copper ion will then be complete and will form into a stable copper atom that will settle down at the bottom. OK, 
Okay. So through this process, we can take copper sulfate, which is a compound, dissolve it into water, apply a current, and then we can get pure copper, which can then be melted down and formed into any shape that we want in order to be able to use it for piping or wiring or whatever the needs are for that metal. So this is one simple way in which we can purify, which we can extract a metal, in this case copper, from an aqueous solution. Okay, so quick question, quick ask for you to do here. I want you to think about for a moment, how would you suggest getting any metals extracted from this rock? Okay, this is where we find metals, we find them within rocks usually, unless they are very unreactive, like gold or silver, for example, which can be found naturally in their individual state. Most are in compounds within rocks. So think about how you could get a metal from this rock. Okay, write down your answers and be ready to send them to your teacher. Okay, to so finish off today, just have a look at the three questions that we've got here. So the difference between an element and a compound. An element is one type of atom on its own. Compound is two or more different types of atom that are chemically bonded. Number two, what does combustion mean? Combustion is burning. And number three, what properties do group one metals have? So group one metals primarily are all very reactive metals. Okay, there are a few tasks for you to complete on the Google form. Make sure you complete them thoroughly. There are also some other videos to have a look at to remind you and give you some more information if you are still struggling with this topic.